Uh, hello everybody. So uh, what we're going to be looking at today uh, are the comparison tests. Now I think this section in Newton is actually called the comparison test, but there's definitely two of them. Um, so here's the idea. Uh, yeah, here's the idea. So we will determine if a series converges by comparing it to a series where we already know the answer. So we will determine if a series, I'll even write it, series AN converges um, by comparing it to another series, series BN. And the idea is that we already know whether or not series BN converges. So where we already know the answer. So without doing any work really for it, um, so this is like the idea, this is not actually how you perform the uh, convergence or how you perform the comparison test. Um, so here's the idea. If I gave you the series um, 1 over n cubed plus 5, right, you should be able to look at that and say that this series is a lot like another series. It's a lot like this series. Just 1 over n cubed. Now, does the series 1 over n cubed from 1 to infinity converge? It does, right? Um, we know, we know that this series, the, the second one, uh, converges because it's a P series with P equals three. P series with P equals three. And that is greater than one, which is what you need, right? Uh, remember, a p-series converges if p is greater than 1. Uh, so if the series that we have is a lot like a p-series that converges, then shouldn't our series actually converge as well, the original one? Yeah, it should, right? Um, so this one should also converge. Okay, um, but this part right here where I just say is a lot like, that needs a little bit of work. You can't just say, oh, it's a lot like it. You need to actually perform some work and that's the work of a proper uh, test. So the test we're gonna do is going to be called direct comparison. At least that's the first one we're gonna do. Um, so, um, yeah, direct comparison. Actually, before we do that, let's uh, just reminder of which series converge here. So a P series, right, looks like this, one over n to the P, that converges when P is greater than one, and it diverges when P is less than or equal to one. So you know that. And one more. Geometric series converges when the absolute value of R is less than one and diverges when absolute value of R is greater than or equal to one. All right, now you just need to know these. Because when you're doing the comparison test, you need to compare your series, the one that they're giving you, to a series where you already know the answer. Well, the only ones you're going to know the answer to are P-series and geometric series. So you got to know P-series and geometric series. And there they are. Okay. Um, also, here's another theorem which I should have had in the previous lecture, but I didn't. Um, this is just a really, really easy one. 
really easy theorem. So if you have a series AN, if the limit of AN is not zero, then the series diverges. All right, so this test right here is called the divergence test or the nth term test for divergence. Uh, this is not comparison. But uh, you, it's useful to know. Uh, all right. So now let's actually do what a comparison test actually says. Um, so here's the idea. So we're going to be looking at two series and they need to be positive. For the theorem, they need to be positive and in real life, they don't really need to. So um, let's just say, how am I gonna write this? Um, mouse pointer, go. Uh, so here's what the theorem will say. Need OBS backup, okay. Um, so if the series AN and the series BN are both positive, so our series with, let's say zero less than or equal to a n, which is less than or equal to uh, b n. So right now I just have, um, you know, two series and all I'm saying is that they both have positive terms. Okay. Now the, what the comparison test will say is simply this, there's two cases. If um, the big series converges, then the small series converges. All right. Um, now the idea there is pretty simple. Um, so the idea is if the first series that I wrote here converges, right? If we add up these and you get a finite number and then the a n's are smaller, right? So we add up the b n's, we get a finite number. And then over here, we're adding up the a n's, which are smaller. These are smaller. So shouldn't they also be finite, right? You're smaller than a finite number. These are smaller, so also finite. That's the idea. So if the, if the big series converges, then the small one also has to. And then similarly, if the small series, which we called a n, diverges, And again, this right here, now we're saying that the small one diverges, so we get infinity. Technically, we don't necessarily, well, yeah, we do actually have to get infinity um, because we restricted this to only positive series. So there's no way, I don't think, that uh, it could uh, diver diverge to any other, any other way. It's gotta be infinity. So if that diverges, so you get infinity, and that's the small series, then what do you think is true about the big series? It also diverges, right? So these are bigger. Uh, so, you know, bigger than infinity must be infinity. Nothing's bigger than infinity except your mom, sorry. Um, so 
that's the convergence test. Sorry, that's the comparison test. This is direct comparison specifically. So we have direct comparison test. I don't know what I'm doing there. Take that off. Uh, that's the direct comparison test. Now, direct comparison can be easy, but it only works when the inequality up here, this inequality works out the way that you want it to. Okay, so you have to be careful about when you apply it. So um, here's an example. Here is an example. Uh, show or does and let's not get fancy let's just do this one converge or diverge okay uh, so what are you supposed to do well you're supposed to compare it to another series so make sure you know what series to compare it to we should compare it to this one Right? There's usually an obvious one to compare it to. That's what you want to compare it to. And you typically want to compare it to only to a P-series or a geometric series. Um, because you have to know the answer. Um, so compare it to that series. Which, by the way, is a convergent uh, P-series. Alright. Now how are we going to compare it? Well, you need to compare the size here. So I've got 1 over n cubed plus 1, right? And I want to know how it relates to 1 over n cubed. And so just think about what you did to the denominator and what you did to the numerator. So from here to here, I made the denominator smaller, right? Because I took away the plus 1. So the denominator is smaller. On right. And if the denominator is smaller, then the fraction is actually bigger. So the fraction itself, larger. So the inequality goes this way. All right? Um, and of course, they're both, we know that they're both greater than zero. That's easy. Now, once you've done that, then you're going to just uh, make sure that it matches the comparison theorem. Make sure it matches uh, the comparison theorem because the comparison theorem only works in two cases uh, where the big series converges and where the little series diverges. There were two other cases where the small series converges and where the big series diverges that were not listed okay so uh, make sure sure make sure it matches uh, the comparison test all right so um, what we've got is what do we have so uh, we see that in this case the larger series which was this one, uh, converges, right? Larger converges. Do we get a conclusion from that? Yes, right, because this is the larger one. It, we're in this case. If the larger one converges, then the small one also converges. So you come down here and you say, okay, um, we do actually get a conclusion from that. Um, so since uh, 0 less than 1 over n cubed plus 1, which is 1 over n cubed, and the big one converges, which again, you had to already know that, uh, we know the smaller one, which is here, must also converge. All right, and so that's how you apply the direct comparison test, okay? 
but like I said, you need the inequalities to work out a certain way in order to apply direct comparison. So like if I take a different example here, um, let's see. Okay. Um, so if we do another example of direct comparison and I put the inequality the other way around, so like let's say like this, one over into the fourth minus five, like so, and I say, okay, let's, uh, you know, does it converge or, or, or converge or diverge? Right? How do you do it? Well, again, we should compare to uh, this one. That's what you want to compare it to. So let's try that. So uh, you've got your one over into the fourth minus five. You've got your one over into the fourth. Now, from this side has the larger denominator, right? Because the other one, you're subtracting five. Subtract five, and um, you know you've made it smaller. So it has a smaller denominator. So smaller denominator means bigger fraction. So it goes this way. Also, let's put some. This would have to start at. Um, or sorry, I put a one here. They can't start at a one. Or you can, but it's not technically meeting the requirements of the theorem, so I'm going to put a 2 here. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, Alright, so compared to there, we got a larger denominator on the 1 over into the 4th. That means a smaller fraction, so the inequality looks like this. Um, so then let's look at what our test says. Uh, according to the comparison test, What we have is we've got uh, this series, the one we wanted to compare to is uh, smaller and convergent, right? That's the comparison series is smaller and convergent. So look at your list here and um, what you've got is the B ends here which are the larger ones converge, you get a conclusion. The other case is the case where, oops, pen. The other case is the case where the A ends diverge, that's the small ones, and they diverge. Well, neither one of those happened, right? We didn't have the small series uh, diverge or the big series converge. So we don't get a conclusion, okay? Um, There's no conclusion from this test, right? Uh, there's, it still converges, it's just we don't have a test for it right here. So there's no conclusion because, um, you know, direct comparison, uh, doesn't have the case. when the smaller series is convergent. Smaller series is known to converge. Or when the larger series diverges. All right, so there's no conclusion. That's the key here. There's no conclusion from direct comparison in this case. So you can only apply direct comparison when uh, in a very limited circumstance. Okay, And because you can only apply direct comparison in very limited circumstance, you would like to have um, a better, you would like to have a better, a better series test here. Come on, work. And um, 
I noticed from the examples that uh, the book's doing the theorem a little bit different than I would for the other for the next theorem. So I'm just changing, um, just double checking how they word it. Blah blah blah. blah. Comparison test. Blah blah blah. Limit comparison test. Um, okay. So. So here's what they have for the next test, which is called uh, limit comparison. And the limit comparison test gets rid of the problems with direct comparison. Okay, so here's what it says. So we need to have um, some ANs and BNs that are positive, but notice that this time we're not worrying about which one's bigger and that's the key that's what makes this work so uh, an and bn are greater than zero for n greater than or equal to one and so they divide this into three cases not everybody does um but that's why i was double checking so uh here's what we have so if a limit as n goes to infinity of an over bn equals L, which is not zero, and, no, then the series AN and the series BN both converge or both diverge. So what they're saying here is that they're not saying that they converge and diverge at the same time. What they're saying is that both of them do the same thing. So that's the case when um, the series are like the same kind of series. So they both are convergent series or they both are divergent series, one or the other. Okay. And... Um, the next case is going to be if you take a limit as n goes to infinity of the a n over the b n like that and you get zero and so basically what happens is in order to get zero here the denominator must be bigger so if you take this limit and you get zero and you happen to know that the b n converges then you're pretty much back in the direct comparison case where the ANs are smaller. So in this case, where the limit's zero and the BN converges, we can conclude that uh, the series AN converges because it's smaller than a convergent series. So that's pretty much direct comparison again, but written differently. Uh, last case, if the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over b n is going to be infinity uh, and the series b n diverges, then what happens is the one on top is bigger. So the one on top is bigger um, than the one on bottom and the one on bottom diverges, then the one on top also diverges. All right, so these are all three of them together make up the way your book writes the limit comparison test. Not everybody writes it the same. And um, and there you go. But the key, the key thing to notice about this is in every case, you are evaluating this limit, okay? Every case, you're evaluating the same limit. It's just interpreting the result. And almost all of these should be like case number one, basically but uh, not all of them, so you gotta, you gotta do the problems. Um, all right, so let us try. Example. So, I don't like that example. 
Oh well. I'm going to go 6 into the 6 minus n to the 4th plus 14 over 6 n to the 7th plus n to the 6th minus 19. Okay, and again, what we're trying to do is determine if it converges or diverges. Okay, so here's the thing. You're trying to decide what to compare it to, and this looks pretty complicated. And so what you need to know is that you only need to compare, like when you're deciding what to compare to, you only need to look at the biggest term in the top and the biggest term in the denominator. So like the biggest term, oops, the biggest term in the top here is the six into the sixth, right? Like if you put in a hundred, six into the sixth is way bigger than any other term on the top. Same thing on the bottom. If you put in a hundred, the biggest term is gonna be the six into the seventh, right? The highest power term, nothing else really matters. And so when you wanna compare it to something, you should think that this is like, uh, so you look at, oops, look at the highest or the largest terms in the numerator and the denominator to decide on a comparison series. So what should I compare it to? Something like 6 into the 6th over 6 into the 7th. That's what I should compare it to. Just the biggest terms. Now what is that? 6 into the 6th over 6 into the 7th? That's just 1 over n, right? Because you can cancel 6 of the n's. Um, so this is what we're going to actually compare to, right? Um, now you actually at this point know the answer because if the series that we're given is like 1 over n, then, oh, sorry, hold on. Theory opened. Um, if the series we have is like 1 over n, then it must diverge because 1 over n diverges, right? It's a p series with p equals 1 and it diverges. So um, we actually already know the answer, and just performing the comparison test is a formality, right? I already know, I already know it diverges. But we have to do it because. Well, we're supposed to do it. All right, so we, we know what to compare it to. Now what we wanna do is we want to perform the limit as n goes over infinity of the an over the bn. Now, which is which? Well, you want to put the one that you know on the bottom just because um, notice that in this case and in this case, we knew something about the one on the bottom, not the top. So, um, this is your bn. All right, so we're gonna do an over bn. So work that out. So limit as n goes to infinity, you're going to have a fraction over a fraction here. So you have um, six n to the six minus n to the fourth plus 14 over six n to the seventh plus n to the sixth minus 19 that's the an over the bn, which is one over n. Okay, now we need to evaluate that. So what you're going to do, remember that if ever you have like an a over b over c over d, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So you just take the bottom fraction, flip it upside down. So uh, the limit that we have is the limit as n goes to infinity of 6 into the 6 minus into the 4th plus 14 over 6 into the 7th plus into the 6th minus 19 times n over 1. Right? The reciprocal of 1 over n is n over 1. So you multiply this in through here, you're going to get 6 into the 7th minus into the 5th plus 14n over 6 into the 7th plus into the 6th minus 19. Now, 
this is just a limit of you know polynomial over a polynomial you should know the answer to this so you should just be able to say that that is going to be simply 6 over 6 which is 1 okay just by the ratio of the leading coefficients here should just be able to look at the six and the six and say, okay, because they're the same power on the top and the bottom, that's all I have to do. Um, if you want to actually do some work there, then what you would do is you would multiply the top by one over n to the seventh, and you would multiply the bottom by one over n to the seventh, and you would get limit as n goes to infinity of everything is over n to the seventh, six n to the seven, n to the seven, n to the fifth over n to the seven, 14n over n to the 7, 6 into the 7th over n to the 7th, into the 6th over n to the 7th, 19 over n to the 7th, which is cancel all your n's. Um, you get 6 minus 1 over n squared plus 14 over n to the 6th. I'm just canceling as many n's as possible from every term. 6. 1 over n, 19 over n to the 7. And now when n goes to infinity, what you get is 6 minus 0 plus 0 over 6 plus 0 minus 0, which is 1. Right? So down this way, this is kind of long way. And, you know, this is the short way where because it's the same power on the top and the bottom, you can just um, divide the leading coefficients, get the same answer. Okay, now we did the limit. Now what we need to do is interpret that according to limit comparison test. So what's it say? Well, what did we get? We got, we got one, right, for our answer. So that's this case because this is the case where you don't get zero for an answer. You get a number, right? This is where it says you get L, which is not zero. So they both converge or both diverge. So since this is, um, since uh, L is not zero, right? It's one, uh, both series converge or diverge. Uh, since we know this one diverges, the other one must also diverge. Okay, so that's the answer. So when you get L not equal to zero, that means they both do the same thing. And we already knew the answer for one of them, right? Because we had, um, we had this series here, which we know is a divergent P series. Okay. All right, so um, that's limit comparison. Let's try some more. Another one. There we go. So again, we need to decide what to compare it to. We should compare it to, we don't care about the two and the four really, but um, we care about the ends. Highest power top, highest power on the bottom. So that's like an n to the fifth over an n to the eighth. n to the fifth over n to the eighth, cancel all five of them is really just n to the three. Right? So this is what we want to compare it to. So our bn's are 1 over n cubed. 
all right? Now, by the way, does that converge or diverge? It's a convergent P series, right? Because P is greater than one. P is three, three is bigger than one. So I already know, I already know that my series converges, okay? Um, so everything else is just busy work to, to go through the motions here, okay? So we need to evaluate the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over b n, which is limit as n goes to infinity. The a n's are 2 n to the fifth plus n to the fourth over 4 n to the eighth minus 19 over 1 over n cubed. So we are rewriting it. 19 times n cubed over 1, right? Divide by fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. So that's the limit as n goes to infinity of all the powers on top are going to go up by 3. So 2 n to the 8th plus n to the 6th over 4 n to the 8th minus 19. Same power top and bottom. So I can just divide those leading coefficients. I get one half. Third step, we're just interpreting our answer. Uh, since the limit was not uh, zero or infinity, right? Um, since L is not zero or infinity, the non-zero constant, uh, both series converge or diverge. Uh, and we know this one converges because it's a convergent p-series. So the other one must also converge. Okay, um, and that's, again, that's how you do limit comparison. I'm trying to find one. Okay, yeah, here we go, here's a good one. I was trying to find one that did something different here. Okay, so um, how would I do this? So this one, um, so converge or diverge. Okay, so here's a problem. Now, you could do limit comparison, but I don't really want to do limit comparison with the square root in there unless I have to, okay? So even though you now know limit comparison, you at least want to consider uh, doing regular comparison and maybe it'll turn out to be easier. So um, let's actually think about this. So if I was going to compare this to this, to this one, which one has the bigger denominator? This one has the bigger denominator, right? Um, yeah, that one has the bigger denominator. And since it has the bigger denominator, that makes it the smaller fraction, right? Larger uh, denominator. So smaller fraction goes that way. Okay. So, smaller. And this, by the way, is actually just 3 over n, right? So what we've got 
is from the comparison test, we've got zero less than, I'm just rewriting this now, three over n, which is less than three over square root n squared minus three, and the small series, the smaller one is the one that's three over n here, does it converge or diverge? Diverges, right? The small series diverges. So by the comparison test, direct comparison, if the smaller of the series converges, sorry, if the smaller of the series diverges, then the larger series must also diverge because this right here adds up to infinity. So if this adds up to infinity and the other one is bigger, then it, di it adds up to infinity. So by direct comparison, this series, two to infinity, three over square root n squared minus three uh, diverges two. So just because you learned limit comparison doesn't mean you always use limit comparison. Because if you did limit comparison, you would have had to, well, do more work. I mean, you still could have done it. Uh, maybe I'll do this one with limit comparison too. Let's do it with limit comparison. What was it? Uh, three over square root n squared minus three. And we started at two. Okay, there it is. Let's try limit comparison. All right, so one, we should compare two. Uh, you have to know what to compare to. Um, I'm just gonna go three over n. Like the same way we came up with the comparison series up here uh, works down here. So three over n, right? Because a square root, just think of square root of n squared is just n. So I, I see this denominator here and I go, okay, well, it's a square root of n squared that's basically n, All right? So compare to that. So then we're going to evaluate, that's our bn. So evaluate um, the limit as n goes to infinity, a n over b n. So the a n is what they gave me. The b n is what I decided to compare it to. I lost the word limit. Um, remember, dividing by a fraction is multiplying by the reciprocal. So we get that. Turns out that the threes don't matter. Just cancel them. So I've got the limit as n goes to infinity of n over square root n squared minus three. But I mean, like this needs to be simplified somehow. And so you've got to do kind of some work here to combine all the stuff that you see. What you have to do is you actually have to say, okay, well that n, we're actually going to need it written like this again. That's where it came from. Now we're going to have to do it again. n is the square root of n squared. The reason you have to do that is because I'm trying to combine it with the other square root. So we rewrite it like that then they're both in a square root, so you can use rules for square roots, which let you do this. And then, when you're taking the limit as n goes to infinity, you, there's actually a rule that says for limits, um, if you have a function like this inside of a limit, and it's a continuous function, which a square root function is, that you could actually take the square root out and do the limit on the inside, believe it or not. I mean, you should believe it though. Um, property of limits. Okay, so you can take the limit on the inside of that square root and then we know how to do the limit of n squared over n squared minus three, right? Same power top and bottom, so you divide the leading coefficients, it'll be one over one which is one. So you get a one, 
which says both series do the same thing. So both converge or diverge. And we already know this one, well, three over in, I should say, diverges. So both diverge. So think about that. Um, limit comparison was a little bit more work because you had to work out a limit. Direct comparison was faster, but you had to think about like which series was bigger and that's kind of a pain. But they both got me the same answer in the end. And um, so sometimes you can use either. Sometimes you have to use limit comparison and sometimes you have to use direct comparison but it's hard to come up with an example um, of that. So, um, yeah. Give me one second here. What are they doing? Interesting. Okay, we're going to do one more example here. And we're going to do this example because it's a weird example. Um, so here's a series. Okay, and um, I think this converges. Um, I don't know why they're comparing it to the series that they're comparing, comparing it to. Um, okay. Actually, you know what? Um, I need to save this for another lecture. There's going to be a separate sub lecture that goes with this that's on evaluating limits. So I'm going to save that one for that. But, um, so this is it for this lecture. I'm going to post this for you guys and then do the other one. So I'll talk to you guys in a little bit.